So today we're reflecting on that passage from 2 Peter chapter 3 and the reality of, of life feeling fixed and unchanging when the truth is that there's more going on than, it, than there seems to be on the surface. And the, the people called the scoffers, and we'll talk more about them, have this fixed idea. And I think we've of, of life being a, a bit repetitive and perhaps lockdown has prepared us to, to be sympathetic to their feeling, prepared us to feel like every day is the same, that even as we're in this sort of complicated post-lockdown, perhaps pre-increased um, restriction, maybe lockdown state, it can feel like life is forever spinning around. But actually the Bible speaks of something entirely different. And we begin again with um, with Peter's take on who he described here as scoffers. And if you uh, saw the, the talk from last week's service, uh, are otherwise described as false teachers. Uh, and, and so they have an argument. And it's an argument that essentially says that um, we can do whatever we like because no one's going to stop us, uh, which isn't the best argument. Uh, it's probably true that they had a, a bunch of stuff they wanted to do, that um, they'd discovered the church and sort of initially they'd been uh, enamored with the, with the rationale behind it and the, the idea of love and inclusion and acceptance. But as it became clear that the following the path of Christ would have costs to it, that they'd have to leave things behind that they really liked, they started to make a, an argument based on the idea, well, do we really have to leave those things behind? Surely that's not quite as loving as we would like the church to be. We'd like the, lo the church to, to just agree to let us do what we want. And here Peter details their argument as um, one based on this idea of there not being a judgment. They look back at history and they say, God has never stepped into the path of human history and intervened. He's never come into humanity and met all their needs suddenly. He's never stepped into humanity and brought about justice all of a sudden. Um, nothing has ever really changed and therefore nothing ever will change. Uh, we're trapped in a cycle with no escape. And this is a, a feeling and an argument that has resonated through generation to generation. Uh, James uh, Thompson, uh, a poet, uh, once wrote, wrote, The world rolls round forever like a mill. It grinds out death and life and good and ill. It has no purpose, heart or mind or will. And this feeling that the world will just spin on and therefore let's just enjoy it while we can because essentially it's just mindlessly here to torture us um, is one that can sometimes resonate with us but that the Bible actually utterly rejects. And Paul's rejection of it comes in three parts. First of all he says, no it's not true that God has never stepped in and met all of our needs. God created the heavens and the earth and they're perfect for us. They meet all of our needs. God's word meets our needs. Uh, and second, uh, he talks about the flood of Noah. Uh, God allowed the chaos of the flood to destroy the evil of um, human society that was prospering in Noah's time. God's word bringing justice. And finally, Peter concludes that God has shown that he sustains creation as we need it and he steps in with justice where it's needed and that he will ultimately um, bring both justice and need fully uh, to realisation when he returns. So God provided with his word what we needed in creation, God's word spoke justice in Noah and God will do both ultimately again uh, when he returns. And so here Peter is seeking to completely um, undermine the idea that you could hold to a form of Christianity that doesn't have uh, Jesus' return uh, bringing people and holding people to account for the choices of this life. So we're saying that Peter rejects the false teacher's argument that if Jesus was going to return he'd have done it by now and so he's not going to return so we can do what we like. We're saying that's, that's not a valid argument because... Um, 
God has shown that he's capable of stepping in and he's promised that he'll step in again. However, the question of why Jesus has not returned yet is a valid question to ask and one to explore. Uh, and Peter's response, uh, remember he's not writing to the false teachers, he's writing to um, the mature Christians, the Christians who are going to have to stand up against the false teachers. So Peter there then goes on to give them some way of understanding a reasonable answer to this question of delay because it's true that when the New Testament in lots of places talks about Jesus' Jesus's return it speaks about it in language that's full of imminence that it's you know Jesus says I'm just gonna go prepare a room for you um, kind of implying well how long does it take to make a bed I mean if it's IKEA flat pack furniture maybe a thousand years but we're going on 2000 now so what's going on and so Peter's response to this question of why it feels like it's taken a long time. And the core of Peter's response is to help us to have a better understanding of God's perception of time as being utterly and completely different from our own perception of time. And, and what is implied through his teaching, which is referring to Psalm 90, is, um, is understanding that God is infinite he's able to be present in every moment in time and space and to perceive each and every moment in time and space from an infinite number of perspectives which is to say that god is with you where you are when you're watching this talk uh, you're not watching it as i'm giving it it's not live so he's with you where you are and he's with me here now he's also with the other folk from our benefice who are perhaps hearing this talk on Sunday morning at the same time as you maybe are watching it. And so God is present in all these moments in times and space. And if you're sort of watching this with a few other people, he's present perceiving it and uh, experiencing this with you from your perspective. And he is equally present with the other people you're watching this with, perceiving it uh, and experiencing it from their perspectives. And so for every single moment in time and space, God has an infinite number of um, experiences of that moment. So for, for God, a single day is like a thousand years because he experiences time in an utterly different way from us. And equally, God is infinite, not bound by time. We're forever stuck in now. You know, time flows at that steady rate of 60 seconds a minute and we cannot escape it. Time flows past us like a, in a series of times and dates. Uh, we can't move around in it or uh, experience it in any other way. But God created time and sits outside of time. He's not bound by the laws of his own creation. He understands time and sees time in a way that we could never understand or imagine. So God's appreciation of time is utterly different. God doesn't see time as we do, as a flow of dates, things happening as they're scheduled to happen. Rather, he stands outside of time and acts when it's right to act. So although a thousand years may pass for us, for God it will be like just a day has passed. To require God to be bound by time is to have the relationship utterly the wrong way around. Time is bound by God. And so we understand that God holds back his final uh, intervention, his justice, in order to give us time to repent and turn to him. That it's the turning to him, the repentance, that is what we're given time for now. Uh, if you think about it, if God had returned after a thousand years, well, we'd all be in a lot of trouble because we wouldn't have been born for another thousand years or so and wouldn't have existed and couldn't have a relationship with him. And so God's understanding of time, God's understanding of the value of waiting, of being patient, of holding back justice for the right time, is something that we both struggle with and should be incredibly grateful for. And I guess that might make us feel like, well, maybe the day, why does the Bible talk about it being imminent? It seems like it could just be forever. And, and so Peter is really very clear that he wants us to understand that that day will come, that dawn 
uh, will happen. And it could as equally be tomorrow as someday five million years from now. The whole point of God being out of time is that it is, it is almost, almost as tangible and ready to happen now as it ever have, as it ever has been. And the Bible talks about Jesus returning soon because it's as likely to happen tomorrow as it is to happen the day after, as it is to happen any day after that. And that, that moment of Jesus returning is described here as a threat. It's a day when all of the stage dressing, if we think of, of life as a play and all of us players on it, then here it's described as the day when all of the stage dressing, all of the set and everything else is stripped away until all that's left is us, the players on the stage, nowhere to hide, no more secrets, no places to, to hide um, those things we may be ashamed of, all of those things laid bare for one another to see. And so Peter says, look, this is what's going to happen. At some point, you're going to stand exposed on the stage before God and all creation. Do you want to be someone who's lived a life uh, of righteousness? Or do you want to be someone who's lived a life of selfishness uh, and greed? How do you want to be, uh, to be seen on that last day? How do you want to be understood? Live as someone... Uh, um, destined for the right world not don't live as someone destined uh, only to ever feel at home uh, in the world doomed for destruction you know we very much have a choice about which culture to adopt the culture of the glory to come or the culture of the world doomed to destruction and as we we live um if we choose to, to be those people who live uh, setting our hearts and our minds on the world to come, we're, in, we're encouraged to, to repent ourselves and to lead other to, others to repentance. You know, if God is waiting for that right time when all who will repent have repented, then the way to speed his return, the way to speed his justice, the way to bring an end to suffering is to lead people to repentance. To, to stop there being any more need for delay. Or we can choose to live for ourselves, destined only for judgment and destruction. And I'd encourage you that if those words spark in you um, anger, if you think it's wrong to, to draw a line so starkly, I'd encourage you to, to keep an eye out for the details about the online alpha we're we'll running, because that's the chance to to ask those questions, to ask the things you might be getting, thinking in your head right now, you can always contact me and do so one-to-one, -one, but if that seems a little bit like, oh, I don't want to do that, Alpha is a great place to ask those questions, to challenge the things you might have heard uh, me say in these services, um, and to explore what others uh, have found in their relationship with God or in their exploration of life and spirituality, uh, all sorts of people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Uh, come to Alpha. Maybe you should too. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this uh, clear teaching. We thank you that you are not bound and restricted by the laws of your creation, but that you see time in ways that we cannot imagine. That your power is beyond our ability to understand. Lord, help us to worship you, not as we think of you, but as you truly are. Lord, we ask that you would guide us towards yourself, that you would give us the strength and courage to walk the path you lay before us. Amen. So in a moment, we're going to have uh, our final song for today, The Lion and the Lamb. Uh, but before then, our final blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you as ever for joining us today. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.